you seem to be very compassionate um, as a person and that has kind of become the strength around what you do. Can you describe yourself and how you became so impactful um, within our vulnerable communities? Thanks, Bubbling Bee, for having me here. Um, let me just start by saying my full name is Daud Dewachimonyo, born 1970. I attended my half of my primary school at Winnie Primary School in Bari. I was born in Adben. Then my other half in my secondary school, I did it But when do my primary school and Mushunje secondary school. Um I will say I was raised in a very difficult challenging times. So my community Guruzeva is the one that made me to be what I am today. I'm so compassionate and like to do or help people because of my experiences when I was growing up. Um, we came to a point where life was very difficult with my parents to a point that um, my secondary school, I had to pay my own school fees. So I will go to get money for my school fees so i will say the community though i was working for me to get the money so i, I will say if that community wasn't there i wouldn't be doing what i'm doing so i think it's more like i wouldn't say payback time but it made me to realize that at times in life some people are not shy to a point they will rely on other people so those are going to the courage or the the spirit to say you know what you need to do this you need to help those are not shy as wrote in the nash i don't have but the little that i have I would rather share than to be greedy. So that's me. I reach out in the communities trying to put a smile only to one person. I cannot change the whole community. But if I reach out to one person, it means a lot. So that's where my passion is. That's what I do. And I enjoy doing it you know just to see someone smiling for me it's a reward to me that's all i can say when chimani money and other areas were hit by cyclone and i you rose to the occasion with other well wishes uh at the time and it looks like you've continued to assist way after the natural disaster what are some of the projects you have continued with since Idai struck yeah when when Chimani Mani happened, to be honest, I felt like I need to do something. So what happened is, before Chimani Mani, I went to Zimbabwe 2017. Then he, what I saw on the ground made me thought of reaching out to the community and say, let's put our ways together. That's when we formed Pact. Pact means protection of adults and children's team. Why did we call it protection of adults and children's team? Is because 2017 when I went there, the Gona they were being used uh, into uh, sex workers, so it was more like sex uh, sexual exploitation. So I came back to the UK and highlighted this to the community look this is what's happening back home so we formed pact so after that that's when cyclone day happened then what we saw was so devastating then i reached out to the people again in the diaspora and those back home and, oh, guys let's try with the little that we can to support these people to support these families so I flew to Zimbabwe soon after cyclone within two weeks or so and thank God P 
people in the diaspora in the UK, they raised money, clothes and everything. So we were privileged again that we didn't find any challenges to go and donate the things ourselves in person. So we went to Chimani Mani, so what happened, spoke with the people, people still staying by my shelters, my Garoma church, and also staying in my, my, my camps. So we distributed what we can. And Taka Pua 133 Pangangu Primary School, Wataka Badarama school fees from 2018 up to 2021 uh, after soon after covid so that's what we did and those children were orphans so packed to it to ourselves and say guys let's do this and this what we've done to Chimani Mani and the Tinemwe project Iriku Chikore and what another project Iriku hopefully where we support women with the sanitary pads Kuchikore Tomba the Futuma school fees Evana is packed. Uh, your work does continue even on social media where you started live programs with the help of a panel that is and there's one you call uh, DDC School of Thoughts. What is your focus on this social forum and can you talk about your other initiative which is raising kids in the diaspora? Um, on the social media platforms um, I started with um, raising young ones in the diaspora. The reason being was um as a youth worker i find out that could we as zimbabwean parents in the diaspora panga paine a gap between parents and the children so i was trying to teach educate to highlight to the parents that you are the first port of call to your children before they go out there into the world so that's why i created that group in raising young kids in the diaspora then i was all over on social media supporting other people then zuba habani asked me to say oh Dewa, you can do your own platform which i did now it's called ddc school of thoughts on the school of thoughts the purpose of the school of thoughts it's an open platform for everyone where we discuss the real life matters the real issues that affect us as people but when you look at um, the real matters or the things that affect us, mainly which people are scared of talking, a love, a love language, a relationships, do the fundamental of the people. There's a lot of my divorces, my heartbreaks. So DDC, we are trying to tackle we are trying to make people feel secure, comfortable to air out or to speak up about their feelings when it comes to love language. Because there's a lot of uh, assumptions out there. People just assume that because I'm dating this person, this person should be behave like this or this person under like this. And we've got a lot of narcissists out there so with the with this platform now people are coming out saying out exactly how they feel or why their marriages didn't work which is like we are using those experiences as case studies to empower each other to think better and to reflect on where one went wrong and how you can become better yourself when it comes to interaction even to be okay with everyone else around you so that's the purpose of uh, uh, ddc it's an open platform where people write their stories we read them then we talk about them and we do counseling as well so everyone is free to come in well i think i have to ask you this before you actually or before i let you go uh, this is on a lighter note, but also business related. Um, you're an entertainer, you know, you a DJ at social events, you are at many functions. How do you, did you find the pandemic lockdowns 
um, as I know this affected many entertainers world over. How, how was it for you? Well, um, the pandemic 2020, oh, I think, affected everyone in a way. I'm a DJ, so there was nothing to do. Everything was shut down. So it affected me a lot in a way because the money that I raise through the functions of being a DJ is the money that I channel to pact to the charity. So all the shows that I do, all the money that I get, I put it to the charity to support other people. So 2020 up to 2022, things will be tough because there was nothing, there was no income. So that's the downside of of uh, the lockdown or of the pandemic. So I'm now trying to get back into the groove to get some more shows. Once getting some more shows, I will go back and still do what I used to do. But to be honest, 2020, the pandemic, it was a challenge which had made me to realize that life is very fragile and we need to come together as a community. We need to be together. It has affected everyone. I'm not the only person who was affected by the pandemic. Even those beneficiaries, they had no support and nature it. They felt it as well, but no, it took a toll on them. But thank God I am here, still surviving. And um, I hope and trust that the things will be better and do what I love doing being an entertainer, being a DJ, and looking forward to get more bookings from people. Because if I don't get booked, I don't get the money. So I'm looking forward to get more shows. All the money that I get, it goes to the charity to support the less privileged. And of course, I know that a lot of people would love to follow you. What are your socials? What are your social media platforms? So people are able to follow and, you know, get to know more about your the illustrious work that you are doing and thank you very much um i will say my social media platforms um i bought my personal facebook page uh in on the doubt the uh on that uh, uh facebook page do you know poster some small quotations trying to just to educate people um about social life that's on my personal page or well, people can follow me on that one you will become f come friends if you want to it's called doubt the watchimonio then uh, i've got uh, ddc school of thoughts it's called ddc school of thoughts that's the page where we discuss uh, real life matters every monday and friday 8 30 p.m uk time until cows come home at no limited time on that one because people were in different my time zones America, America, Canada, America, Australia. So please just join in. So that's another handle. Then um, I've got uh, TikTok. My TikTok it's doubt the watch monyo. I post there again. I've got Twitter handle four triple six four dewa that's my twitter account i've got youtube doubt the watch monyo that's my youtube i post as well things they even my my streams that i do could did this school of thoughts they will go straight to youtube uh which other handle do i have i have got instagram four triple six four dewa uh, which other do I have? Uh, I've got an email, doubtc.yahoo.com. So you can find me there. So Facebook page, it's Doubt De Uh Another Facebook, that one is my personal one. Then I've got 4664. That's my Twitter handle. Then I've got DDC school of thoughts 
that's my page i have got tiktok doubt the watch monyo so you can follow me on that thank you so much guys